In this video, I'm going to show you a quick power run and dynagraph from this 1900cc crossflow. It's currently fitted with 40mm carburetors and 32mm chokes. Then I'm going to show you a little drawing as to why I don't usually fit 33 or 34mm chokes in 40 DCOEs. And then I'm going to show you what actually happened or what the difference was when I did fit some 33mm chokes. And bear in mind, this crossflow is 1900cc. So if it's going to benefit, if anything's going to benefit from, from big chokes, it will be. So here we have a rather rudimentary drawing of a carburetor. Throttle butterfly, choke tubes, and in red is a venturi or choke. And the whole point of it is as the air comes in, it meets the venturi choke, and that's something of a restriction. So for this volume of air to get through that gap, the air has to speed up. It's got to go faster. And thereafter, it can spread out and slow down again. Now, why do we want it to go faster? Well, what we need to do with the carburetor is we need to suck the fuel through. So we need a depression. We need to make low pressure. And in fact, what happens is that because our fuel is discharged, via the auxiliary venturi, so there's, there's the fuel come through from the float bowl. So with all this air rushing up there, through there, the fact that the air has to speed up a lot here creates a very low depression. And that sucks your fuel through. So that's the Venturi effect. Now, why don't I go bigger than 32 mil? Well, my original reason, many years ago, was because the man I worked for told me that there's no point going bigger than 33 mil because you lose all the Venturi effect. So the carburetor doesn't function properly. And then a few years later on, Dave Walker unequivocally told me, after flow bench testing, complete waste of time, you get no more airflow. By the time you've got to 32 millimeter, the aux vent and the throttle butterfly and everything else, is more of a restriction to airflow than the choke. So all, do, all, all you achieve by going up in choke size is reduce the effectiveness of the carburetor. And the only vehicle I know that came with 40 D series as standard that used bigger than 32 millimeter chokes was, uh, was the Lotus Esprit Turbo. The early ones. 40 mil carbs, and I think they had 36 chokes. And quite simply, if you've got a big snail blowing vast amounts of air through there, the air blowing past the aux vent will get plenty of fuel through. You don't necessarily need the Venturi effect with the turbo. So we can ignore the spray turbo for a minute. So I've said why, but let's, let's, let's do it in more of a picture. So with our 
carburetor, which is 40 millimeter. We put a 32 mil choke in. There's an eight millimeter difference between the butterfly size of the choke, which seems a lot, seems like plenty. But in reality, the auxiliary Venturi slots in. So when you slot the auxiliary Venturi in with its vent tube, like that, this is only 37 millimeter. So it's actually 37 minus 32. So there's only a five millimeter difference between there and there. Or two and a half millimeters per side, which is very, very little. So if we enlarge a choke to 33 millimeter, we're down to, we've only got four millimeters, just two millimeters difference per side, which is tiny. It doesn't do much for airflow because the butterfly and the aux vent and gubbins itself is already reducing airflow. And if you think, if we take it all the way up to 34 or 36 millimeter, there's now such a tiny difference that the air doesn't really speed up. And because the air doesn't speed up, you don't make as much depression as here. So you end up with going bigger and bigger on the main jets to try and get some fuel through. And what tends to happen is that you kill response to the throttle low down in the rev range. So that's why I don't go bigger than 32 mil because basically it doesn't work. Yeah, okay, there's always maybe sometimes an exception on, and maybe at an ultra high RPM you might, with, with, with really long induction and ram pipes, you might just find a gain. But for the most time in the real world, going bigger than that 32 doesn't have any real effect. So now we're gonna go back to the dyno. I'm gonna install a set of 33 millimeter chokes and I'm gonna show you the video. In case you're wondering, I didn't just install the chokes, pull the throttles and go, well that's it, they didn't work. What I actually did was I installed the bigger chokes, did a couple of pulls, and as expected, the AFR went lean. And I actually had, I had to up the main to try and pick up the airfield ratio low down in the rev range, and I had to come considerably down on the airs to get it back higher up in the rev range. So, let's now just show you this, the graph with the big chokes. Now looking at this graph with the big chokes, you can be forgiven for thinking it looks very similar to the graph of the 32s. So, here we go, I'm gonna join them together. Three, two, one. And at this point, you can see there really is very, very little difference. In fact, the differences are so small that can almost be considered differences between runs. So one thing you can say for sure is, if you've had to considerably reject to suit the bigger chokes and the power hasn't gone up, then the smaller chokes weren't holding the engine back in the first place and all you've now done is make the engine less flexible, less tractable. And just maybe, maybe, maybe there's a tiny gain at the very top on those 33s, but I'm not sure that's real. I'm not sure that's really there. But what we know is if that engine really does want more air, we'll prove it hands down when we bought the 45s on it, which will come in a later video. So 
if you liked it, if you like my little diagram, and I've never tried to do diagrams to a camera before, if you like that, then let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll see if I can do some more for you. Catch you on the flip side, guys.